Welcome to IGSS Online Training. I'm Mike Torrance, Seven Technologies, Denmark. I'm here to present our SCADA system, IGSS. Lesson seven, creating objects. In this presentation or lesson, we're going to look at what an IGSS object is, which object types exist in the IGSS software, and how you create an object, which in this case is the representation of a process component. An object is a representation of a process component, for instance, a pump, a valve, etc. It's also the way to determine the size of the IGSS system. The larger the process to be controlled, the more objects are needed. Each object in an IGSS configuration must have a unique name within the configuration. It must belong to one of the 10 IGSS object types. And it may, but need not be based on a template that ensures accuracy and consistency. What we're going to look at now are some predefined IGSS objects, which obviously are not directly related to process components in the configuration. All predefined objects are located in the IGSS software installation. When you create a new configuration, these are copied to the folder for the new configuration from one of the installation subfolders called slash GSSORG. We look at the PLC-related objects that are predefined. The first is driver. The driver object monitors PLC communication at the driver level. The second PLC-related object is the dial suspend object. And the third is the dial up object. These are used in connection with remote communication to PLCs away from the plant where historical data is brought into the system at predetermined times through a modem connection, typically. Other predefined IGSS objects are found in connection with the user administration module, which is IGSS's configuration module for security. We have an uh, object called template protect. Um, <clears throat> we can see it's a template because it's spelled with uh, uppercase. Then we have a, an object based on the protect template object called protect, spelled with lowercase. Uh, in the definition supervise, modules. We have the global object, which we've seen in the presentation of areas and diagrams. This is the topmost area where system-wide parameters are created. Then we have an object called graph. This is used in supervise for creating dy dynamic graphs, which the operator typically will do uh, while he's uh, controlling, monitoring the plant. Then we have the log user login object. This is used to register <coughs> and identify users that log on and off the system. The prerequisite for using this object is that the configuration is set up with the user administration security module. And then the last one is the system object. Uh, this monitors hard disk space and report folder accessibility. Object types. Again, uh, these are <coughs> present in every configuration. Area, diagram, graph, and group. Um, these are used to uh, logically divide uh, the configuration and to uh, control the configuration from a system point of view. <coughs> these are always present uh, in every configuration, as I mentioned before. Then at the bottom, we see the process objects themselves. Uh, these are analog, digital, table, string, counter, or scaling. We've looked at these objects before and what they are, so I'm not going to go into any detail about these again. How do you create an object? <clears throat> well, there are several ways to do that in definition. <clears throat> One way is to use the object wizard from the objects menu. By selecting another creation method uh, in the choices underneath the object wizard item, 
you have several different possibilities to use. Another way, a third way, is clicking on the diagram itself, right-clicking, and then selecting New. And this is what that method looks like. When you right-click on the diagram, select New, then you have another submenu that comes up, and from this submenu, you can choose uh, the method you want to create your object by. In this case, we're creating <clears throat> analog, an analog object because we've chosen the last menu item in the right-click menu here called Analog Elements. No matter which method you use, <clears throat> the next thing that will occur is that the object browser will appear. Uh, and notice the title uh, up at the top of the dialog box, Object Browser Locked by Create Object from Menu. So I know which method I'm using. I can just look up at the top there and, and find out which, menu, uh, which, which method I've, I've chosen to create my object. The next thing I have to do is make sure I select the correct area, <clears throat> which in this case is Workshop, and then I go down and select Analog in the tree view on the left. After I've done this, then I go down to the right-hand bottom area of the object browser and key in the name that I want to give to my object, in this case Q1, and then I click Create, and I've created my object. And this is what it looks like <clears throat> uh, when the dialog box comes up. I can click on the individual tabs to go in and choose the settings I need for the object Q1. When I'm finished doing this configuration, configuration work, I have to remember to go down and click the OK button. If I click the, uh, the red close button up here, none of my, uh, none, none of my um, uh, selections are, are, um, are saved. So I always have to remember to click OK down here to actually create the object and keep the settings I've chosen. Now let's go online and see how we create an object in the definition module.